As we've discussed in earlier videos, the two fundamental steps of machine learning are first, write out a probability model, next, fit it using maximum likelihood estimation. To do this, we need to be able to find a formula for the likelihood from the probability model that we've written down. This video will all be about likelihood formulae. First though, I want to step back and talk about how we specify probability models. So far, we've seen three different ways of writing them. We can write them in code, or we can write them with random variable notation, or we can write down a likelihood function. Here's an example, the climate model from the first video. You may like to stop and look back at the earlier videos to remind yourself what the code does and what the random variable notation means. For the likelihood, well, that's the formula we need to find in order to do machine learning and to see where it comes from, keep watching this video. Now, these are just three different ways of talking about exactly the same thing. When someone asks you for a probability model, you can give your answer in any of these three views. I like the code view best for intuition. I like to run the simulator and plot the output and see if it looks plausible, and I'll keep tweaking the code until I like what I see. And the likelihood view is what we need for machine learning because it's the likelihood formula that we need to feed into our optimizer. And the random variable notation? Well, I think it's the cleanest and most concise way to describe a probability model. And more importantly, it's the bridge between code and likelihood. Okay, let's talk about likelihood. First thing we need to do is get some decent notation for it. Good notation lets us write down nice, precise maths rather than waffly wordy sentences. Here's the notation we're going to be using throughout this course. Pause the video and read the definition. The likelihood function is written PR subscript capital X open brackets lowercase x. And when I say it aloud, I'll say the likelihood for big X of little x. There are two clauses in this definition, one for discrete random variables where we just use probability, one for continuous random variables where we use the probability density function. There are loads of results in machine learning that have two versions, one for discrete and another for continuous, and it's a real nuisance to have to keep saying every single sentence twice, especially when the formulae work pretty much the same in both cases. And this is the notation that will let us write out just one formula and say, Oh, and this formula just works for both discrete and continuous. If the random variable has parameters, I like to write it with a semicolon, because here the outcome little x and the parameter theta are playing two completely separate roles. Theta is the input parameter to the random number generator, and x is a possible output. Some people prefer to write it with a vertical bar, that read it as the likelihood of x given theta. But I don't like that because it makes it look like a conditional probability and it's nothing at all to do with that. Or you could, you know, just drop theta altogether if you're not interested in it and this will save time in writing. Okay, let's see how we use this notation in practice. The first point to make is that the notation keeps track of two different things. There's the random variable big X, which is a function. It's a function that uses the random number generator, so it gives a different answer each time we, we run it. And then there's the observation little x, which is one possible output value from the function. It's tremendously useful to keep track of both of them in our notation for when we build up more and more complicated probability models. Like, look at those on the left. The first one says, what's the chance of getting the answer 0.2 when I call the random number generator big X and the random number generator big Y and add their outputs together. It's an awful lot of ideas packed into one dense little piece of notation, enough to make a mathematician rub their hands with glee. Okay, next example. If we have a pair of random variables, 
we generally want to reason about both of them together. And for this, we write PR subscript X comma Y. This means the probability of seeing the particular outcomes little x little y for both of them at the same time. Formally, we could just say let z equal x comma y be a random variable which returns a tuple, and then pr sub x comma y is just the probability mass function for z, the probability that the random z takes values little x comma little y. If this formalism helps you understand the notation, good. If not, just ignore it. Next, if we have a pair of continuous random variables, it's a bit more work to say what the likelihood actually is. And we'll leave the maths of this to the next section of the course. All that matters for now is that we know how to work with the likelihood function, which is what the next examples are about. If two random variables, x and y, are independent, then the likelihood function factorizes the likelihood of seeing little x comma little y is the likelihood of seeing little x times the likelihood of seeing little y. This applies to collections of more than two random variables, of course, and in particular, it applies to what's called an IID sample, something we use all the time in machine learning models, and in fact, which you've already seen in the video on maximum likelihood estimation. Let's suppose we have a data set and we've chosen to model it as a collection of independent random variables all drawn from the same distribution, let's call it X. Then the likelihood of the entire data set is just the product of the likelihoods of each of the individual terms. Okay, so this is how the likelihood notation works. The point of this notation is to make our life easier by saving us the hassle of having to write out different versions, one for discrete and continuous, and possibly others for any other type of random variable we might be working with. Here's an example. Pause the video and have a read. This is just a restatement of what maximum likelihood estimation is. But this is a better way of writing it than what we had before, because this applies automatically to discrete random variables and continuous random variables, and it applies to individual observations, and it applies to data sets of independent observations, and in fact it applies to any other type of rich data set, even if the observations aren't independent. Here's another example, a bit more challenging, Bayes' rule. You should all know Bayes' rule from a first course in probability. It says that if we have two events A and B, then the conditional probability of A given B is given by this formula here. Now, we could just glibly turn this into a statement about a pair of random variables, call them X and Y. The probability of observing X equals little x, given that Y equals little y, should be given by this formula here. I've just defined my two events A and B appropriately, and I plugged in Bayes' rule for events. But hold on, there's a problem here when Y is a continuous variable. Can you spot what goes wrong if Y is continuous? The problem is this clause here. If y is a continuous random variable, then the probability of observing any specific value little y is zero, so the denominator is zero, so Bayes' rule for events never applies. It turns out, though, that there's another version of Bayes' rule that does work when y is a continuous random variable. We're going to come back to this in two weeks' time, and we'll go through this carefully. But for now, all you need to remember is this. For discrete random variables, likelihood is just another word for probability. And for continuous random variables, it's not a probability, but it does all the things we'd like a probability to do. Okay, so that's likelihood notation. The point of going through all this notation setup is to make our life easier when we want to describe more advanced machine learning models. And that's what we're going to do next. We're going to look at the probability models behind two main types of problem you come across in machine learning, unsupervised learning and supervised learning.